Now it's time to use technology and science together to focus on the most complex and powerful computer on the planet, our brain. And in this session, we're gonna explore the application of modern technology to neuroscience. Discoveries that are already leading to increased understanding of the brain and enhancement of our functionality and our approach to diseases of the brain, such as tumors, Parkinson's, depression, Alzheimer's, and others. It's really exciting to get to share with you a couple of the things that we're doing uh, in our laboratory. So one of the things that it's useful to do when you're tackling a new area of science is to ask, what's hard about it? And in the brain, there's really two things that are really difficult. One is space. Brain cells are huge, but their connections are tiny. If you want to understand the brain, the algorithms that the brain uses to compute that generate thoughts and feelings and our actions and decisions, you have to be able to map those circuits. How does information flow? And this is a truly staggeringly complicated problem. The second problem is time. So in biology, there are many processes that are slow. In the brain, the electrical pulses that happen within brain cells are very fast, milliseconds in duration or even shorter. And so what we really need, if we want to build technology that lets us speak uh, to and from the brain and to augment and repair brain disorders that affect over a billion people around the world, um, and of which there are essentially no cures um, and, and few treatments, frankly, we have to be able to conquer space and we have to be able to conquer time. Uh, today, I would like to try and make the case on why I think the brain is important. So if we have a scale, we say that'd be nice on one side, and then the other side is important, where does the brain sit? I did a test over the past uh, four months where I convened 12 dinners, uh, about 15 people per dinner, some of the smartest people I know. And I engaged in a mental a, a, a thought process, a thought exercise. And I said, okay, let's all imagine that we are in the year 2050 and we would like to be happy in the year 2050. Now that means different things to each of us, but let's just say we want to be happy. What things are important for us to achieve that goal? And without fail, I'd always get the same responses. Well, you know, governance is really important. We need a good functioning government. Healthcare really matters a lot. Uh, climate science is important to address. Education matters, et cetera, et cetera. It was basically that we have this shared vocabulary as a society of what do we collectively agree is important? Like what demands resources, time, and attention? Not once in over 250 participants did a single person identify the brain as important which to me is the biggest blind spot we have as a species. For everything we are, everything we aspire to become, everything we're trying to do is a result of our brain. What's going on with brain-computer interfaces? Like, you've been working on this for a while, but there's this cacophony of people getting involved, which I find very exciting, as I think we all do. The people on this panel, Elon Musk announcing, Facebook, my former employer announcing, it's pretty exciting. I've been really focused, before I dove in to do this, to find a non-invasive approach. And a non-invasive approach for two reasons. Number one, if you think of doing elective brain surgery for millions of people, I think it's a non-starter. Number two, even if your cell phone's off, people can spy on it. So if you've got an implant in your head and you want privacy to have some private thoughts, with a non-invasive solution, you can remove it. So I thought fundamentally a solution had to be non-invasive. Well, we have a non-invasive solution that already works for reading low-resolution thoughts now. It's called functional magnetic resonance imaging. There's a, there's a, there's a burgeoning field that involves the uh, biological effects of physical energy, which is heard about in light. Another one is sound, and that's what I'll be talking about. So focused ultrasound is a early stage, very early stage, non-invasive therapeutic technology that has the potential to be as revolutionary to therapy as MR scanning has been to diagnosis. So we're moving in a very positive direction. Uh, we got a ways to go, but we're getting there much faster than anybody could have imagined, I guarantee, 10 years ago.